Okay. Is that good? Okay. So again, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. And those that are going to be watching later on video, thank you for your interest and your willingness to um, look beyond the apartments. Uh, so I really appreciate it. Um, I hope to do the meeting. I hope to end at 8 because anything after an hour and a half kind of gets a little long unless you still have questions. I mean, I can stay here all night. So I don't know what everybody's schedule is. So we'll just, we'll just target for that. Um, the church has a policy of no smoking anywhere on their campus, whether it be the grass or the parking lot, anywhere. So if we could respect that when everybody leaves. Um, I just have a quick brief overview in case anyone missed any of the details that I posted on next door, um, which as you know, those that have kept it turned out to be very lengthy. Um, so I'm just going to go through it there real quick, just a little over five minutes probably. Um, and at the end, I have a question for you. So if you could hang around for that, and then I'll have a question for you and a request. Um, I have invited not only you, the public, but also the developer uh, with Cumberland Advisors, Mike Murphy, he's here, um, the engineer, Joe Haddix, uh, the landowners, uh, Harry Johnson and Phil Smart, uh, city manager, Kenny Martin, uh, Chief Hambrick, Chief of Police, uh, Public Works, is Neil here? Okay. Somebody from Public Works was going to be coming in. There he is right there. Hello, Neil. I was just introducing you. <laughs> um, and uh, Mark Hinesley, President of the Chamber. Um, for the purpose of not to give you a sales pitch, but to answer any questions that you might have. Because uh, I'm not an expert in any of these fields. <laughs> so I wanted to cover all the bases. Um, the second and final reading of this plan will be July 13th. Um, I did vote to pass it at first reading, and if you don't know, everything that comes through the BOC has to go through two readings before it's approved or not. And so I did agree to pass it first reading because I felt the Depart of Development as a whole was important enough to move forward for discussion, which is where we are now. So. Uh, when I put my name in last summer, I pledged to be a citizen advocate. I pledged to communicate with you, and I pledged to create um, open discussion and dialogue, and that's what I've created here, is a roundtable discussion. And you, you are important, and I appreciate each one of you being here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a roundtable discussion. Um, so we'll get started. Now, how many of you read the Tennessean article? This is the headline. How many of you read the headline but didn't read the article? Okay. Well, good. That's good. Because most of society doesn't take the time to read articles. I used to be, I have an advertising background. I used to lay out newspapers and magazines, and I know how important headlines are. Um, they can... You know how the media is. I mean, uh, nationally, we, we all know that we get sucked into that. Now, this is was Andy Humbles. I don't blame him. I knew he was going to do it. He called me for a quote. I knew this is what he does. He's media. I, I don't expect any less. Uh, what if the headline had been this? Mount Juliet Development. Plan to bring in thousands of jobs that would include extending Providence Parkway. Would that have swayed your opinion in any way? Would you still have read the article? Just just pointing out. Alright, this is the original plan. In case you didn't know, uh, this plan PUD was approved in 2013 and um, I think a little revision maybe was done in 2016. It was 271 acres that included retail office, commercial, mixed use, single family, and then the, these creekside apartments here which exist, they're complete, and this hotel right here that's been under construction. And so um, this over here is single family. 
this right here was what was that that wasn't single homes was that town homes or what was that on on the plan or just it, the, the it approved version was single family single family okay so as you can see all this blue area right here is cmu which is zoning which is commercial mixed use and that has to do all this is you know has to go through the planning department and they they do all the zoning um, very quickly this as you can see here all this is cmu uh, this was basically laid out from the original plan. Um, there's Creekside right there, and that's where the new hotel is going under construction. So that's kind of the layout. Uh, this was sort of the phases in the original plans. Uh, the red is the road, and as you can see, that's the road that exists right now, Providence Parkway, and that's where it ends. Phase two was to extend it out a little further, but not all the way to Central Pike, and then Adams Lane. And then the third phase was the rest of it. And of course, the widening of the rest of the widening of Central Pike that it would involve TDOT as well. So, what's up for a vote on July 13th is an amendment to this plan, which, in other words, is a request for an addition, or requesting an addition to the plan, which is 310 apartments right here. Uh, putting hotels back into the development where they were taken out originally because Mount Juliet didn't, their hotel zoning wasn't up to par. They redid that in 2016, so planning thought it was quality enough to add them back in. Uh, so for the, with this amendment, it's the apartments and the hotels, there's a stub uh, on the private property and other mining uh, minor zoning which is right here changing this from single family to CMU and that that's what we'll be voting on uh, that's another clear layout right there which is the same layout it's just kind of refreshed basically is what it is um, this is the, the four zoning phases this is phase one but I don't really consider that phase one because that's already done that's Creekside, that's the apartments that go on under construction. I really call this phase one, and I don't know if you can see, but it extends Providence Parkway all the way to Central Pike. It includes just a, some like turning lanes right here uh, on Central Pike. And, um, and that, so that's zone one. Also in zone one is the first office complex, or, uh, you know, the start of that, which would be right there that's phase one phase two would include Adams Lane right here and more development here and then of course phases three and four include everything west of Central Pike and all the rest of the roads so uh, again that's Creekside that's the hotel going in right now uh, the, the, that's just the bigger pictures of what these are some images of retail hotel and office uh, I, I took pictures with my phone, so I didn't have the digitals originally. That's a close-up right there of the hotels. There's eight buildings uh, on the outside here, three in the middle with little courtyards. Uh, planning and Public Works did request that this parking lot go on the outside of the buildings and those buildings be pulled in. There's some better pictures of the one of the buildings. Again, there's eight. Uh, here's one building here with attached garages, which I, I personally like. Uh, okay, so uh, this is zone, this is uh, District Four. This is my district. Um, so if you live here in this area, uh, this pertains to one of my questions at the end. If you live inside the city limits, south of the interstate. So remember that because that's going to be one of my questions. Okay, that's all mine. So um, we'll just, oh, do you want to do your thing and then we'll open the floor? Yeah, I think that'd, okay. be, I think that'd be great. We'll do that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Again, my name is Mike Murphy, Cumberland Advisors. And uh, I'll see if I can talk and, and change from her slideshow to mine.
So Jennifer and I didn't do a lot of coordinating with the um, with the show tonight, and um, so mine is very similar to what you did. So I'll kind of speed through that, so I will, so I won't uh, won't bore you. So um, she just went went over this, but basically this shows the uh, the area of Providence Central. An area. One of the things that I like to uh, point out on this is, is really I think the reason why we have have come and um, revisited this PUD. This this property is located at uh, at a future interchange at, at uh, Central Pike and I forty and is a tremendous asset in middle of Tennessee and I think should be viewed as a tremendous asset to Mount Julia in that what I mean by that is with this interchange when this interchange comes in this is going to be a huge economic driver for the county and the city as far as generating tax dollars and that's going to translate to quality of life for everybody that, that lives in the city and the county I know when I bring up taxes a lot of times with the city they, they talk that not many of those taxes go to city. They just got a you know sales tax of 16, 16 cents or something like that. But what we need to realize is that half of the tax dollars generated by the uh, county are currently being devoted for um, for schools, which is what is really important to residents and what is important to future employers. And so. The, the reason why we're really revisiting this and, and why I think that this is a huge asset is we're located just a few minutes from uh, National International Air Headquarters or Airport. The airport is spending about four to five billion dollars in improvements right now. It is one of the main generators for the prosperity and the growth that we've seen in, in Middle Tennessee over the last 20 years as these improvements are in place it's going to further that and, and double that down and so that's kind of why we're here one of the things that the, the PUD already has in place is um, office retail it originally had hotel that's been pulled off we're trying to get that back on so all these uses have been my point here is that all these uses have been available for eight or nine years the reason why you don't see very much office going on out there right now, in my opinion, is because Providence Parkway has not been extended. What that does is that, that extends all the utilities and, and the access, and it shows these corporate um, headquarters, these, these tenants that we're trying to attract, that we're serious about wanting them in Mount Juliet and, and want those jobs here. So. That's that's really what we're trying to do. Um, Jennifer has showed you the, the overall PUD. As you can see, it's very similar to what we are proposing with a few exceptions. This plan called for multifamily on the site that we have identified as 20 acres of multifamily. But right before it was approved, the uh, city commission at the time wanted the, the landowners to come back with a developer and a specific plan that they could review. That's kind of what we're doing right now. As, as a part of our, our proposal, one of the things that one of the things that we're doing, the most in my opinion, some of the most significant things that we're doing is we're offering the city and the state eleven million dollars worth of infrastructure improvements. That will at least Providence Parkway is, is represents about eight million dollars. We're going to put that in immediately, and so that is significant. Again, it shows the commitment from the the landowners, and it, it shows a commitment to 
tenant prospects that, that want to relocate here as far as what we're doing that that gives them a timeline with this approval and our ability to put put in Providence Parkway I can then turn to uh, potential tenants and put a date on that and say okay in three years I can have you in here in four years I can have you in here I know that sounds like a long time frame for, for most of us that are not in the business but um, it, it takes quite a bit of time to plan these things out get them financed get them done and if you have a corporate headquarters of you know 200,000 square feet or 250 employees or whatever um, that's the time frame that you start looking you, you start looking three to four years in advance so um, the timing is the timing is right and that's why we think it's uh, a, a good good plan good time to, to start again Jennifer uh, kind of sh showed you this plan and I don't know if you can see it a little bit better on this or not but the the blue on that plan represents office use the um, the, the purple kind of pinkish color or hotels we've added those back and sprinkled those through there's one particular location can I talk to you that using your little uh, pointer thank you We show a uh, we show a conference center site right here. I think it's going to be an excellent location right off of the right off of the interchange. These buildings are mixed use buildings, and then, as, as Jennifer pointed out, this is the location of the multifamily way off of the interstate. All most of this is predominantly office. A lot of office in the blue, and then you've got single family down here. Uh, we added a uh, big box retailer here and we would hope to be able to lure a significant name and um, obviously generate significant tax dollars and uh, retail sales volume there. One of the things that uh, while I have this master plan up I'd, I'd like to expand on too is the timing of the infrastructure and the timing of the uh, traffic impact and the timing of the overall interchange so the extension of Providence Parkway will probably take about six months to, to, to put in simultaneously will start on the apartments but they'll take three years to fully develop and then fully lease and occupy so the full brunt of the traffic would not be felt for about three years so you have two and a half years worth of the benefit of these road improvements before this even is fully uh, operational the other thing that that does is we have to think about it opens up all of this land that would be fully developed with access uh, all utilities and ready to go so that in that time period we're hopeful that we will have several office buildings that choose to locate here because of that fact that the, that the uh, utilities and all are, are in place and so if we look at this TDOT has, has said as, as I'm sure everybody knows TDOT has um, approved the access request in, in 2017 they have committed to fund that project no later than 2025 and then a uh, worst case scenario it would be completed by 27 but they've also said that with corporate relocation here with some some activity in this area they could accelerate that and that's exactly what we're trying to do we're trying to accelerate that um, we're trying to accelerate that interchange and if I remember my slides I've got a couple of uh, yeah so this is a page out of the uh, access request document I realize nobody can really read that I, can, I can't even read it from up here but I've highlighted a couple of things from that report in the center of that uh, in the center of that page that are really significant 
we, we all know that the traffic currently on South Mount Juliet Road is, I mean, it's a congested highway. I mean, it's a congested, congested road. But the significance of the new interchange, it will reduce the impact on South Mount Juliet Road when that is open. It will reduce the uh, eastbound off-ramp by 68%. 68%. It'll reduce the westbound going going back to uh, Nashville by almost 50 percent, and then everything south of of I-40 by by roughly 40 percent. So that's the so that's really the goal here is to improve the traffic on South Mount Juliet Road. If we don't do anything that the state has committed to that interchange, I, I'll agree with that. But. They also are looking for a commitment from Mount Juliet, and this is a significant um, investment for TDOT. All in all, it's roughly $70 million when you add the improvements to um, Central Pike all the way to Hermitage. Um, so so I, I think that it, it's, it's just good faith to try to do what we can to promote what we what we can on our end be in the city and the in private development and so we've tried to um, create a public private partnership if you will by donating and putting this infrastructure in to seed if you will the office development which I think all of us want to see is the uh, uh, white collar jobs and, and the class A office in this area another significant benefit is that this interchange will um, this interchange will afford the opportunity to have a lot of, of benefits of this economic engine right at almost practically at the Davidson County line if you know what I mean so the effects of the congestion and the traffic and we mentioned a, a regional retailer they're going to be pulling from all over but that traffic will be uh, localized right here in this area predominantly and then the the um, tax revenue that's, that's generated by this overall area will be able to be distributed throughout the county and the, and the city um, one other thing to to note I know you guys can't read this but uh, I'll just summarize what I put up here the benefits of immediately extending Providence Parkway it promotes an immediate traffic benefit that's relative to the you know the two and a half years that will be open before the apartments even are occupied promotes office and retail development promotes expansion of the tax base immediately and promotes job creation for corporate headquarters it also promotes the possible acceleration of the, of the timetable of the interchange we've got a couple of slides up here that kind of show what I'm sure most of you know that uh, the International Airport is expanding and, and is a large contributor to the growth in, um, in uh, Middle Tennessee. I will open things up for questions, comments, and look forward to... Yes? The Providence Parkway extension, will that go, the, the early part of that, is that the central pipe or is that going to go all the way through? That, that early, your first, first plunge. Okay, so let me make sure I understand the question. So you're asking about Providence Parkway. So it is in phases, and I can show you the, the different phases. The first phase is approximately 3,200 linear, linear feet, so, you know, about half a mile from the current terminus point at Creekside Apartments all the way and tie into the new location of Central Pike. You may know, I don't know if you can see this, but TDOT plans on building a new bridge for this interchange and, um, and then relocating Central Pike, shifting it slightly eastward. Did I answer your question for the first phase? Yes. Okay. Um, one other thing that I neglected to uh, mention earlier in my, in a, kind of a broad overview. Currently, Adams Lane comes in here from South Mount Juliet Road and runs along the interstate and tees into an intersection here at Central Pike with John Hager. As a part of the inter, uh, interstate access request, TDOT is looking 
to relocate John Hager and Adams Lane uh, and, and pull those back away from the intersection or the, the interchange. And so <clears throat> as we, and they have accepted uh, and, and we're working with TDOT um, for this plan, uh, it's not totally approved, but we were working in concert with TDOT, I guess is my point. And the next phase, you talked about phases, I uh, explained the first phase, kind of the next thing, when, when some of these other parcels up in here are um, sold and developed, as a part of that, it will be incumbent on us to put in the extension of Adams Lane and put in some improvements here that uh, Public Works has requested, some turn lanes and so forth. The focus on this section of Providence Central will be several years into the future. We're talking about, you know, couple of million square feet of improved area and so the the build out of this area it's kind of hard to grasp just looking at this you know pretty little picture here but it's probably 15 years to 20 years worth of development out here just to give you an idea of the, of the magnitude and the scope and I have a microphone here so that we can help the uh, video pick up the audio so if you have a question, I'll try and bring the microphone to you. Okay, all right. Okay. I, have a, I have a question regarding um, timing in terms of uh, the, the development uh, that you're planning on doing goes in in two and a half to three years. And PennDOT, or PennDOT decides whether the interchange uh, train, change for uh, South Mount Juliet Road onto 40 or the new bridge that you're talking about there if they get extended out beyond since you don't have any control over that and you're ready to start occupying these buildings that you're planning on putting in it seems like there's going to since there's no coordination necessarily with that timing i'm worried that the you're ready to occupy and Tindot is not done with their updates on the bridges or um, the infrastructure that they're doing that you're taking occupancy and the traffic is going to really get punched at that time. Does that make sense? Well, I think I understand your question. I'll have a, a response for you, but okay. Jennifer, oh, do you no, have no, some? Yeah, so let me make sure I understand your question. You're concerned that, that if we immediately start on these apartments and, and put this in, that we don't have any control over what's going on with this bridge widening or the interchange. Right. And and I totally agree with that. I, I don't have anything to do with that and no control over it. But um, I, I would probably defer to Public Works to address where they are with TDOT and, and where that situation is. And it sounds like to me that it's pretty well underhand. You know, they, they have a good time frame on it, but I'll let him deal with that. And he could probably speak to this, but let me be clear. The traffic generated by these apartments is only going to be like 2,000 trips a day. So that's equivalent to a, a tip, I was going to say Chick-fil-A, but Chick-fil-A probably generates a lot more than that. A typical fast food is going to generate 2,000 trips a day. So it's not it's not crazy like you know going to tip the scales, and so we don't need the interchange to justify developing um, apartments here at all. It's 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 actually kind of the, the opposite. It's a it's a um, it's a it's a mixture of uses that will accelerate the uh, TDOT, because we already have it in writing from TDOT that, that they will fund it no later than 25. I mean, it's in writing from the commissioner, and I have to believe that the governor and the commissioner, if they say something, I mean, it's kind of, it's going to happen, especially if they put it in writing. But do, you see my, do you see my concern, though, in terms of if the traffic's already dead now, 
and they're delayed somehow, and you're done, the traffic's going to get worse at, at, until they catch up with you. Well, I, I, I don't really agree with that because actually the traffic, if if we come off, if, if a lot of these residents come off and come down here, they're not they're not traveling up and down South Mount Juliet Road, and I don't think that that's really the the concern that you know. So I guess using that line of logic, the landowners here should just put this everything on ice until until something happens there, and that's I just don't know if that's realistic. Well, if you put 300 apartments in place, regardless of them just going straight to their apartment or not, they're going to use Providence Parkway, they're going to use South Mount Julie Road, they're going to be on Blinda City Parkway, they're going to be 300 more, you know, whatever. They're going to, they're going to be using the public works roads for that. So just, just coming off the interstate and going straight to the apartment doesn't necessarily neglect the fact that they're going to be using all the roads around town. So are you suggesting that that Mount Julie just shut down until that go in no no more single family because single family generates traffic too. Yeah. So what's the difference in in putting a 300 unit uh, single family subdivision? I think the the point of the fact is that uh, I think most people are more concerned about the roads that aren't being taken care of before the development of more oncoming traffic. We, we have we've had talks or concerns about um, and things being done with uh, South Mount Julia Road since 2005 nothing's been improved since 2000 oh, we're gonna do that we're gonna do that it's never been done it's talked about it's been we, we need to do it everybody knows we need to do it traffic backs up all the way to Stewart's Ferry on South Mount Julia Road but nothing's being done to consider that so I know that doesn't doesn't involve your development, right. but adding to that already com complex issue of a disaster of a of a setup for the South Mount Julie Road is is going to just add to the problem. Well, a couple, couple of comments. I, I mean, I don't disagree that South Mount Julie Road is congested, not at all. Um, and 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 I, and I also think that you know that residential subdivisions are being approved without any discussion of traffic. And it just seems to be uh, I, I hypocr that. hypocritical to me. But, but I, so I think that there's just a, a thing that we have to look at there as far as what's adding traffic. But more specifically to your, your question, the, the widening of this, of this big bridge project is underway. And since we have public works, maybe I'll, I'll invite you up to maybe speak a little bit about that if I could. Sure. Uh, we are expecting the bid letting on that improvement on the South Mount Juliet Road to be this fall. So that the bridge widening of South Mount Juliet Road uh, construction should begin within the within the year. And completion roughly um, in the next year. Yeah, I'd say it take a year. So we're two years out from the bridge being widened from from it being finished. Okay. And what about Mount Julia Road itself? That that's the same. All I'm saying that's all going to be done at the same time. Going northbound. Yes. Not going southbound. Southbound was a major issue. Is. No. That, that that's a different that's a different project. Okay. So how how far out is that project? I believe we're in the four-year plan on that one. Wonderful. I'm talking about south of Providence to Central Pike. Okay. Central Pike to the current five-lane section. Okay. That, so that's the section that I'm talking about. That's the section so, yeah, yeah. south. Yeah. South of the interstate to Central Pike. Yes. Two-year fix. It, no. Okay. Four-year fix. fix. So four years from no, now. No, from, from Belinda Parkway, that area, the, you know. To Central Pike. To, to, no, going northbound. The widening of the bridge is, the bridge is, is letting, yeah, it's letting okay. the from the buildings. From Belinda Parkway to Central Pike is four years. Well, I actually don't think it, 
is from Belinda Parkway. I think it picks up a little further right. down. But yes, about to Central Pike, Pike, it's more than four, four, five years. Yes. So we're four years out, and I'm going that way. He's three years from current occupancy of you know 300 more people. So on top of the fact that we're going to have three more 300 more apartments, we're going to have construction during that same time on the main thoroughfare through Mount Juliet that should have been fixed 15 years ago. That, that's, a, that's accurate as far as the timeline, yes. Okay. Um, can I just address the occupancy question real quick? Um, the part of what's been put in the plan is that there will be no occupancy, the request, I should say. There should be no occupancy until Parvitz Parkway is fully extended and operational. The mayor has put in that there will be no occupancy, occupancy until the widening project is complete. So he, he put that on the table at the last meeting. That's just, that's just a section from Belinda Parkway to the bridge, basically. That's the widening of well, okay. yeah, the Yeah, uh, the overpass. That's the overpass. The overpass. Right. So the, the mayor put that on the table at the last meeting that they cannot occupy issue occupancy on the apartments until that widening project is complete. Um, that has not been approved. He put it on the table. It will be voted on one way or the other. Now, Neil, I know that Planning and Public Works also requested a date be put in there since it is TDOT, the December 21st, 2001, rather than leaving it open-ended. December 1st, I think. December 1st, 2001. December, what did I say? December 21st, 2021. Okay. Yeah, so they have requested, instead of leaving it open-ended, that um, the winding project will be completed or December 21st, 2001, whichever comes first. 2021. Uh, but I will say that's not what the mayor has on the table. So that will be discussed and voted on one way or the other at the meeting. So I wanted to make that clear. Okay. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, it just seems like it's um, putting the, the cart before the horse. You know, the roads and south of Mount Juliet need to be fixed, needed to be fixed years ago. Right. And uh, we're waiting on the tax, we're waiting on this, we're waiting on whatever it is they're waiting on, and nothing's getting done. And well, in the meantime, we're suffering through the traffic. Of the I know. It seems like nothing's being we're done. We're glad there's things here to do. We're glad there's things, places to go and eat and shop. It's great. It brings people in. That's, that's awesome for the, for the county and for the city. That's great. I think, I think we're all in favor of those kind of things, as long as the infrastructure's there. Right. Yeah, and I agree because I live here it's, too. It's, I'm a resident, so I drive in the traffic every day. To have to go all the way down Central Pike to go around all the nasty traffic. Yeah. And then spend, you know, some people are spending 15, 20 minutes just to get from Stewart Ferry to Central Pike. All right. And just to make it clear, TDOT has been in the pro they have to go through all these phases which environmental there's an environment there's a design stage there's an environmental stage there's a if a bat sitting in the field you know all that stuff um, has to be considered so they back they have actually been going through the phases but yeah I, I totally agree it, it seems like nothing's been being done but since I've been on the board I've learned I'm learning I should say all these phases so it is technically in the works but yes i asked when they're going to break ground because that's always what i was sure. when are you going to break ground on south mountain Hill road to central pike yeah so, so so this is my what little i know about development you could probably answer this better than anybody being a developer the first thing you the first thing they want you to put in is the infrastructure the roads the sewer the you know all that stuff first and then you develop around it that's the opposite of what Mount Julia did. They built everything and then they will figure out the roads later. So why is it okay for the city to do one thing and every other, every other developer to do something different? Uh, do you want to address that? My answer to that is when Providence, Car Providence Marketplace went in, they put the cart before the horse. That's the way I see it. It's still being done that way. And when, you, when you approve three, four, five, six hundred homes, roads that aren't ready for them they're still doing it yeah in other areas uh within little developments we also ask for road improvements like well, yeah that's like right. you know that kind of thing but as far as this one is different with uh, was a, what i wanted to point out because the 
which is really unheard of around here, is for the developer to put the infrastructure in first. So I mean, that, that's a plus, I think. Um, I'm not saying I'm for it or against it, I'm just saying that is a plus, because that doesn't happen around here. And you know, I totally agree. So I wish that they had done this when they put Providence Marketplace in. But um, I don't, I, at the time, I don't think they really expected the growth that's happened. So how do we as citizens of, of the city require the city to improve the roads before they approve everything else? Okay. Um, would that be a question for Kimi maybe? Or would you like to address it? Let Kenny try. Okay. <laughs> this is our scene manager, Kenny Martin. Okay. Yes. Thanks, guys. I will say with with this with this development, they, they are doing a substantial amount of infrastructure. It, it's just not South Mount Juliet Road. It, it is. Uh, I mean, they're doing three lanes. They're extending uh, Providence Parkway, three lanes all the way to Central Pike, turn lanes on Central Pike at that intersection, improving the intersection at Central Pike, but it does go to Central Pike. Our fault is, and, and it's already on, we've already got dates, and, and it's already on the books, is for is for the um, uh, interchange to come in and take a substantial amount of traffic off of Mount Road by by some of these connections. Uh, and, Before and Central Bike, Central Bike, and um, South Mountain the Road are state roads. They're T dots roads. If y'all don't mind, this elderly gentleman here in the middle has a few words to say. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know him as a dear friend of mine. I love you, brother. He's got a few words to say real quick, and I'll respond. Well, I know the city put together 24, 25 million dollars for the infrastructure and uh, acquisition, has any of that been done? For? Yes, yeah, I think I can answer that. And you might want to rest, because you know once I get going, it's over. I'm going to interrupt you. No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to everybody, and I totally get it. Uh, my wife taught here for years, she retired. My kids grew up here, my grandbabies are growing up here. I live here, I come to work here 30 plus years ago as, as the fifth police officer. And there was nothing here. Everybody remembers the field for those of you who were here. So I get it. I totally understand. And I remember when Providence came and there was a sign for those of you who were here. I remember it was over in the field. It said, Future Mall coming in. One time it was supposed to be Mall of America, and they talked about a roller coaster inside. So when this finally happened, I was extremely excited. And to be honest with you, it's been a huge blessing in a lot of ways. But with any kind of growth, you're going to have traffic. But let me give you guys a hypothetical. If today we did a total, and this is a dirty word, moratorium in Mount Juliet on growth, but yet everybody continued to grow around us, the traffic would still increase on Mount Judah Road. And what was projected when Providence happened, let me give you the, I guess the, I hate to say facts, that sounds terrible. The facts of actually what happened when the mall was built. The mall was built 2006 or so, I believe in, in there. And at the time the state had said, we're gonna do this, 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 and this. And the interchange at Mount Judah Road was like a C minus maybe, is what they call it. They rate that based on what the traffic was at the time. But they said at the time that Providence opened, it within five years Central Pike Interchange, if those of you remember that, would be open as well. What actually happened was, is that when retailers are coming, and when the mall was talking about coming, there was a commitment made that the state felt like these road projects would be done by such and such time. So when they started working with tenants like Target and Belk and JCPenney and Kroger, they felt like they had the green light to go ahead and proceed. Well, once they decided to proceed and those leases were signed and property was bought and started developing, then unfortunately at the state level, monies didn't come in like expected, and so that money funding dried up. To the city's credit, to your city's credit, for somebody who's here, and I get where you're coming from, trust me, nobody likes traffic even though we're part of it. I get that totally. But I want you to know the facts were. The facts were the city had to go back to the state unleash some of those money so we could get the uh, slip ramp put in, you guys know where the slip ramp in, to get the interchange improvements, to get the I-40 improvements. You remember back then, I-40 hadn't even been widened yet. So there was a lot of good that came of that. What didn't happen was the widening of South Mount Juliet Road. And when you're dealing with state roads and you're dealing with federal funding, it just takes so long. And to be honest with you, it's typical government. And it's not good and we don't like it. Um, so what we're trying to do now is your city that didn't have a prop tax up until about eight years ago, it was zero, it's 16 and a half cents. 
I just wanted to convince you that a lot of the blessings that we get, for example, from the growth, there are also curses that come from. I totally get that. I totally get it if a new subdivision comes in. But a lot of us wouldn't be here had it not been for those opportunities that came about. So I know there's just a lot that we won't say or I won't say you know, to convince your heart or to convince you entirely. But I can say that even if we stop growth today, you're still going to have the traffic coming from other places. And then what would happen as a result of that then, things would dry up here, it would go somewhere else, but you'd still have the traffic as a result of it. So thankfully, this city, your city, which is amazing to me, because when I started out here, we shared police cars. There weren't any take-home cars. There weren't lots of those things. All the blessings that we've had, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, has to come as a result of the growth, which is retail. To give you an example, how many folks like Costco? If I said today we're going to get you a Costco, is there anybody that would be opposed to that necessarily? And some, some would. Some wouldn't want something like that necessarily. But we do get a lot of requests for that. It would, unfortunately, generate a lot of traffic. So one thing I'm proud of the city, what they do now is they require developers where many years ago our city never thought it would grow. So they probably took some things that they shouldn't have or allowed some things that they shouldn't have been. But what they do now is say, we want that infrastructure on the front end. We require these guys to put in turn lanes and add this and do that and do the other. But uh, there's $77 million, I think is what it actually is, for Central Pike and 40 to be upgraded. And all the engineering work and all that that went into it, the city had to put a certain amount of money into it, even though it's not just a city issue. Does that make sense to you? Literally, if you get to Central Pike out here on South Mount Juliet Road, once you get beyond that, you're outside the city limits of Mount Juliet. But think of all the people that come from that direction and come into the city that aren't putting any money into those roadway projects. So the city said, you know what, we're going to take it. We're going to take the bull by the horns and lead through the state, through our staff, to put money up, to put skin in the game to get the state to do this. So basically the reason it's happening is because your city said, you know what, no matter what we do, we got to look out for our residents. I agree with it. It didn't happen years ago, but that was actually no fault of the city. Once the, the, I guess you'd say the horse had left the barn, there was no way to put it back in. The development had already started and then the funding fell apart. So what the city's been doing is chasing that ever since then, stockpiling money aside from the retail development, not from property taxes, from retail sales taxes, that the city basically, through being good stewards, set the money aside so that we could put skin in the game so that the state would do this. I can tell you as I stand here today, that there's at least one 70,000 square foot office user that's interested in this development, and it's mainly medical. What that does at the state level, because the state's the one that controls the funding, and through the Governor's Improve Act, it makes the state take notice and say, you know what, maybe there is interest in it, because if the state puts up $77 million, they want something to come at that interchange. They're not going to invest that kind of money in an interchange like that just to say, hey, it's just for traffic improvement. That helps, don't get me wrong. They realize they've got a problem on South Mountain Jure Road. Your state representative realized that. Your state senator realizes that. We definitely realize it. And they want to help. And I can tell you that there's people peddling like you wouldn't believe. But sometimes best laid plans don't always work out as we had hoped for. And at this particular point, we got to join forces together to figure out how do we get there. But one of the first ways you get there, their development happened or not, is we got to figure out a way to extend Providence Parkway. We got to figure out a way to realign Adams Lane. We got to figure out a way through the state to get South Mount Jewett Road done. And the way that that's happening is Andy and Neil, Neil's our Deputy Public Works Director. Those guys in our city and the staff work tirelessly all the time with the state to get projects on, on the list of state projects. And you can get on there and be on some type of list, but until they get funding is what they call it. Well, the city, fortunately, the state's already committed saying they're going to do it. It took years just to get federal approval. So I, I won't ramble on about that, but I'm hoping that it explains. Because to me, at Hearst Park, sometimes I said, well, the city failed to do this, or the city put the cart before the horse. The city would have never approved that project at that particular time without the assurances that we had, and unfortunately those assurances didn't work out. Would I have ever thought in a million years we'd be in 2020 and still talking about a road that was supposed to have been done in 2011? Absolutely not. But what I'm excited about is the city never gave up and kept pressing and pressing in a professional way and going to all the TCC meetings and the GNRC and the MPO and the RTA and building those relationships because if we don't join forces today, it won't happen. And if the state doesn't see progress, and if the state doesn't see that we genuinely are wanting to do these things, and I'll tell you guys this as well, what you're seeing going on in the country, there will be some exodus in some places to where people want to move their corporate headquarters here. They want to move their businesses here. And that's a blessing to them. So I sympathize. I totally get what you guys get because I live it every day as well. I don't live too far from where this actual development will be. And I understand it. 
My wife does it, 62 years of age. She talks about it. Nobody likes traffic. But the only way we're going to get there is to, is to trust. And there's some things in the past that probably could have been done better. I totally agree with you. But I can tell you as I stand before you today, with I get nothing from this, but I get the suspicion. If I was if I was in your same shoes, I would get, what are they getting? What's this? What's that? I totally get that. But I can assure you without a doubt whatsoever that personally as I stand here for you today, I get the apartments. And I want to make sure we get some of those questions. Me as the former police chief, James Hamrick is the current police chief, to, to give you some assurance, to make you feel better about some things that you may have questions about. That's to me more important than the actual development itself. Does that make sense? If it's God's will, this development will happen and our citizens will support it. And some of us will be disappointed, but I hope that you trust that as we go forward that we can prove to you everything we're going to say. I can't fix because I wasn't city manager years ago and I'm sure there were some mistakes made. But I know the people that are here then that they tried hard to make sure that that happened. And a lot of things have happened in our economy, a lot of things happened in our society since then that kept that from happening. But a lot of the pieces have been put in place, including the Governor's Approve Act and, uh, and all the infrastructure needs across the country. We're getting there. But I'm going to stop for a second because I think it's questions are more important than anything. So if they, they widen four lanes off the floor, across, across Central Pike, basically making it a four lane, if they widen that out and it looks like it comes back together before Pleasant Grove Road, I'm sure there's, there's projects in place and plans for widening of Central Pike all the way, like you're talking about the Davidson County, which is great. But if they're going to put more traffic on Central Pike, how many more people have to die at Pleasant Grove with all the extra traffic, with people topping that hill at 60 miles an hour? Yeah. When they when that should have been flattened out. Has that ever been looked at? Was, yes. Is there, is there yes. A, As a matter of fact, the city, of course, we could go today. Say we had sad cash in pocket today, and I wanted to widen South Mount Dirt Road. I still couldn't make it any make it happen any faster than what the federal government's going to allow through engineering, design, environmental, and so on. I can tell you in all the years that I've been here, and it's not to dispute what you're saying, it's just to make sure that people understand. I agree, I go through that intersection all the time as well, and it's dangerous. And the cities work with the state because Central Pike is a state road, just like Mount Jura Road is a state road. And they, you know, there's certain things they're not going to let you do that only the state can do. Now, I can tell you, as long as I've been here, I've never seen anybody killed at Pleasant Grove Road in Central Pike. Is it very dangerous? Absolutely. Have I seen crashes there? Absolutely. Does it need to be fixed? Without a doubt. You're exactly right. The good thing about it is I'm not sure how soon that happens without the work that the city's doing now because the state will never put the Central Pike interchange in without upgrading all of Central Pike. Does that make sense? In other words, everyone will do is put in a new interchange and dump all that traffic out on that narrow road. And I feel like in my heart of hearts, we're closer now than we've ever been. And it's evident all of us are doing something right because look at our property values. Look what happens in our, has happened in our community and all that with a little or nothing on the sales tax. I mean, the property tax. So you're right. What you're saying, everything, I totally agree with you. Every worry and fear everybody's got, I totally agree with you. Can't dispute that whatsoever because I live here as well and I feel that. But I'd also feel like we're on the cusp of something great here. All right, we have a question. Okay, I'm, um, having lived in Franklin for 10 years, moved there before it started growing, and it grew past the roads and continues to grow past the roads because it, it's just ridiculous there. My concern is that these interchanges are not going to help the fact that people that move in those apartments or move off the central pike because it's now easier to get back and forth, they're going to come somewhere to shop. And you said yourself, uh, Chick-fil-A produces a lot of traffic. There's going to be people sucked into South Mount Juliet Road to enjoy what we have over here. It's going to be more convenient for people to get there, so the traffic's going to go up. My concern is South Mount Julie Road might get to where it should have been 11 years ago, and we're still going to have a problem. Yep. Especially with Central Pike, all the down the, down all those new developments past Wright Farms. Those those have to go somewhere. That's a two-lane road right now. It's got to funnel into South Mount Julie Road. So I don't. Want, I, I think we're kind of overstating the advantage to Central Pike and the new interchange as it relates to people in the evening doing what they want to do versus going into national floor. I agree. I, I agree. There's road projects all throughout the county. For example, many, many years ago, 30, 40 years ago, those of you that travel Central Pike, uh, the county and the state were, reached out at that time and were looking to widen Central Pike, and it was actually opposed. I don't know if many people remember that many, many years ago. They actually looked at upgrading Central Pike, and folks turned it down. I remember thinking then, that's a horrendous mistake. 
of course, it was probably made by the people who lived on it because they liked their quality of life. But if you look at a lot of the development, and I agree with you what you're saying in Franklin, because Franklin is an awesome city, too, if you look at a lot of the blessings, too. Sometimes we, we discount all the great things, but I hear what you're saying. But a lot of, those, a lot of the road infrastructure projects that we've had in recent years, like I'm proud of the city. Can you imagine not having Golden Bear? That's a perfect example of something your city took on as a city project and how much difference that made on the traffic. The same with the bridge at 40. The city took that on because they realized the importance of it. I believe, what's that, eight to $10 million? That's yeah, so at eight to $10 million, well, the things you don't see is you gotta go get the right of way. You gotta do the engineering, you gotta do the design, and it just takes years. Even sometimes on the right of way, what that means is I come to you as a business owner and say, I need just a little sliver out front in order to widen this road to this section. And how long that can take even legally because somebody thinks it's worth this but when an appraiser thinks it's worth that so you're right will we always have traffic problems here yes because the close yard of Nashville, of course you're going to have the density you have people want to be here and to be honest with you it's going to get worse and the reason i say it's going to get worse is because nashville middle tennessee tennessee in general is a wonderful place to be i know that when i came here years ago mount Jill was a spot in the road and if you needed something you went to lebanon or you went to nashville and I can't tell how many people told us back then, we want you to start recruiting businesses. We'd love to be able to just go and shop in our own community. And that in itself is a blessing. I know if we could go back and make it country again, that'd be a blessing as well. But uh, what you said, sir, is spot on. I can't tell you that there's many, many roads throughout the county, in my personal opinion, that we've got to be focusing on. And I definitely encourage us to reach out to our county leaders as well, because the city is the one through the state that's working on the bridge at 40 or any improvements within the city even though a lot of that traffic comes from the county and even outside our city limits. Yes, sir. Yeah, I got a question for you first, Kenny. Did you say that they will widen Central Pike before they put an interchange in? No, no sir. They're going to do that in conjunction with, in other words, they won't put the Central Pike interchange. Today they just said go put an interchange in with all the slip ramps, and it's called a cloverleaf, I believe, or something, design. Cloverleaf design, you know, the yeah. big loops. They won't put that in until Central Pike is, up, uh, is upgraded as well. In other words, it has to be all inclusive. Everything has to be together. Does that make sense? So in other words, you don't have to worry about getting off at 40 at Central Pike and then traveling down that little narrow road. That is part of the upgrade. But, I mean, for that to make sense, wouldn't they have to widen Central Pike first? Because you're not going to be able to mate those two to be ready at the same time. That's not going to happen. Yeah, and not being an engineer, I don't know the timing. I'm going to walk up here so we can both point at a map. And I'll talk loud. The timing, uh, this is three sections. This is three projects. Uh, down here, interchange, down here, and then in between. Uh, and they're all happening. Oh, you're talking about this section, right? Okay, this section happens a lot of the upgrades from this. I'm talking about up here. Yeah, you're talking about on the other side, yes. Yeah. So what he's wondering, Neil, since you're the engineer, is through the state, I've got to assume, as he does, that they'll do that in conjunction with the interchange. I don't know that there is a, I don't know that there is a plan on the books from here forward. There is from here back, but I don't know the timing on anything past that. Gotcha, okay. But this is the part that's definitely upgraded. Okay. And it would come, you assume, before the interchange or at the same time. Well. This development does uh, a large portion portion of, of this, um, and then the interchange would connect to that, and then this would be a uh, okay. The, all the two two seven by two. Right? I got it. So there's no plans right now to widen Central Pike. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I just don't know about it. Okay. It's, it's, on, it's a it's a T dot. Yeah. It's a T dot. Yeah. Uh, when I was at the T dot meetings, like I said, you never know until you're there, but. What I was told at the state level, and I've been to a lot of TDOT meetings because of my position, but what I was told is the central pike was a part of this because they wouldn't dump that much traffic off an interstate interchange onto a narrow two-lane road like that without upgrading it as well. So. Well, I, I hope that's the case because if we're going to bring traffic at 80 miles an hour, which is about what it runs, through this little loop and onto a two-lane road, the accidents he talked about in Pleasant Grove, which comes in right here, and that hill nobody can see, that's gonna be a problem, and we're just gonna bottleneck all that. I don't see how we're not just creating another problem here by saying we're fixing a problem here. I, I've looked at this, and full disclosure, this is, the, this is the farm that I live on. So I get nothing out of this deal, and that's, that's fine. 
if somebody wants to sell their land for millions of dollars, I wish them good luck. But everybody's selling this on the idea that this is going to answer a lot of our traffic problems. It won't. I've met with TDOT uh, and, and everything. We're selling a lot of this on the Central Pike Interchange is going to solve your problems. It's just going to move them to a different area and you're going to still have the same problems there. That's my opinion. And, and if you disagree, come on up. Now, earlier, Mr. Murphy, I think you said that if they did the Central Pike Interchange, that it would relieve 68% of the traffic that would be getting off here. Yeah, I think you had a slide up and you said- Yeah, I've got, I've got the slide up and that's taken directly from TDOT's access request okay. document. Well, I understand that, but if we're saying it's going to relieve 68% here, and that 68%, I'm assuming we're saying it's going to come off this ramp, that's not a good thing. That, that's a very bad thing. First of all, I don't know where they got their numbers, but for the people that think that if they put this here, that they're going to take, just say, 70% of the cars that are coming off here, I don't know where they got that number, but I, I can't believe that. Uh, but anyhow, my point is, in full disclosure, our land is going to be taken in this deal. So I've got several problems with it. I don't want our land taken. Two, I could live with it if I thought this was going to help anything. This would help until you got all this. So any help that this interchange would have given, in my opinion, is negated by what we're doing here. So we're not talking about making improvements for the people that live in Mount Juliet now. We're talking about getting more people and, and that's who they're going to try to benefit this by. And, and I, don't, I don't fault anybody that wants to sell their land. We may want to do that one day, but that will be on our terms. So in, in my opinion, what's supposed to be our savior it's just going to be the twin nightmare to what we have up here. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. I mean, the, the, the fact is, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I can just read the statistics that they put in their access request. And, um, you know, the, as Kenny was saying, maybe he could talk a little bit about economic development. I mean, it's hard to, it, it's not a light switch. You can go over there and turn it off for a while. and and kind of chill out and then come back and say, you know what, we need some more money. Let's let's turn the light switch back on and have corporate relocations and, and people that want to be here. So uh, again, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I do know that the engineers put this plan together and it was it was uh, geared for the for the future traffic volumes. And and that's what kind of T dot does mm -hmm. for a living. So any any other questions? Yes sir. Maybe you could help me with the map a little bit here. Okay. Bonnie and I are new here. Been here one year. Hey, Stuart. Grab the mic so you can see My name is Stuart. This is my wife, Bonnie, here. We uh, looked very carefully before we moved to Mount Juliet. I looked on Google Earth, and I saw the link over there. You couldn't miss it from 100 miles in space. I saw the tennis courts and I saw the trails. I saw the proximity to a lot of good things. So we, uh, we moved here into Del Webb and we're very pleased to be here, right? First thing we did was join the Chamber of Commerce. Thank Mark, wave your hand, man. This guy has done a lot for the community. Also, I happen to know that he went to a lot of meetings like this when Del Webb was gonna be built. And a lot of his input went into seeing that this whole area, this side of, this side of South Mount Juliet Road turned out really good in our opinion. We're very happy here. We're not anxious to see a whole lot of traffic come in but uh, we're not gonna move over that. We think the new freeway exit here, long haul, good idea. The gentleman with the farm right there, that will be worth a 
lot of money. Do not care. That may not be your goal. I'd also like to thank Captain James Hambrick here, our Chief of Police, what a great guy, and Captain Chandler back there, done a great job here. We feel very safe here. We, uh, I have a, a small, you might say, criticism, criticism, gentlemen. Great job on the plan, most of the streetscape and layout and uses I'm in favor of. Our favorite thing to do, and we'd be doing it right now, if we weren't here, would be to hike in all the trails over here that surround all of Del Webb. We hike that almost every day. To us, that is a huge sense of place. We've got it over there. Where is your sense of place here? Don't take that as a criticism, but as something to do. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, we do have extensive uh, sidewalks and uh, and trails throughout the the uh, property. So, with 250 acres, there'll, there'll, there'll be a little bit of a of a walking trail for folks there. But thank you for your comments. Another question? Uh, nobody yet has talked about the police aspect of this, the coverage for the community, schools, uh, the infrastructure as far as lights, power, and all the things that go in are easy to take for granted. I look everywhere around. I'm, a, I'm not a Mount Julian City resident, but I'm on the outskirts. Uh, I see a lot of apartments coming in. I see a lot, of, a lot more new development in buildings and brick and mortar than I see in the infrastructure. But we've talked through all that, and I appreciate the city manager's comments there. Um, but is, if, there, if there's something that can be said about um, the bigger picture as far as our schools and policing and uh, maybe even the property values, how, is, how, is, how are the apartments, how is that going to stack up? I mean, is it, is it cheap housing? Is it luxury housing? Uh, do we know? Uh, do we care? I think we care a lot, actually. We care. We care quite a bit. Um, this, this is luxury housing. We've got um, about 300 units. It's a gated community. Um, average unit size is right at 1,000 square feet. The average rent per month is 1,500, but, but it'll range from 1,300 to close to $2,000 a month. So these are, these are extremely high end. Units. A thousand square feet is a high-end unit. I'm just curious. I want. To, I'm just trying to get my definition that's, that's, right. That's the that's the average. That's correct. They they run from about 800 to 1500. So, you know, we've got one, twos, and three bedrooms, and so we look at um, we look at qualifying for these. You you need to make at least three times a monthly rental. So, you know, kind of the starting bar would be. 55, 60,000, but in, in annual income for the for the primary lease signer. But you know, we'll have a lot of there's just a lot of transition. You know, I live in I live in Franklin as well, and um, I, I was there 20 years ago developing an office building, and the the uh, corporate relocation people that, that would come in. They're like, yeah, we, we like this area. It's got a brand new mall and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. It's all great. But, you know, where are my employees going to live? You know, I, I have other people other than executives that, that I need to, to uh, appeal to. And so if you're trying to sign a corporate uh, tenant and a corporate lease, they have, let's just pick a number, 200 employees. Well, obviously, they have some executives. Single family homes is great. They have middle management and they have all kinds of different levels. So you have to have housing that matches up with that, or at least proximity. The nice thing about this interchange is that they'll be able to pull from a, a broad range of, you know, people in Tennessee easily travel an hour to, to their place of business. And so that opens up a, a wide area. 
And the beauty about what we have here is a reverse commute from Davidson County. I guess you heard that they just increased their taxes 34% last week. That's, a, that's another feather in our cap here and another arrow in our quiver when we go after these, these corporations. And so anyway, the, the corporations are going to look at it and say, hey, I, I want to be able to make sure that there's a lot of different types of housing and, and, lo and proximity. And, and we've kind of skimmed over this. And one of the things that is a, a huge benefit, this is a high speed, uh, it's called a diverging diamond. There's, there's two, there's two um, designs that are approved right now. We don't know exactly which one, but the preferred one seems to be the diverging diamond, which means that you never stop. They, they, they change the, the lanes, and so you never have that intersection there. So it's, so it's high speed here. So you're getting people in and out. And on, and on, the, on the corporate side, you, you will be able to localize a lot of that traffic. Now, will that traffic never hit anywhere else in Mount Julia? Of course not. But, but a, there's a large amount of people that will come in here, spend their dollars in retail, or, or work over here in this office, and go down here and have breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever, those tax dollars stay here, and then they go back to Davidson County or Sumner or Rutherford or wherever they live. So that's the benefit of, of localizing this at an interchange. Yeah. Uh, my question was about electrics and power and water and well, of schools. Course. Is any of that, uh, can that be addressed here? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've been working with, with Public Works for, I mean, Joe had, had this figured out in, in 08 as far as the plan. So whatever we have to do anything, we have to put water, power, sewer, storm sewer, I mean, all that in. And that's gonna go in as, as a part of our plan for this 3,200 linear feet. That's gonna be fully improved with gas, water, electric, uh, and storm sewer, sanitary sewer. It's actually, there's a pump station already in it, but that's the, that's the beauty about this. It, it fully opens it up to where it's developable land in this area, so there's there's probably 150 acres right there that'll be prime, ready to go. Mike, could I make some comments? Yes, sir. Jennifer, I'll take a very short time. I won't take long. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I need that or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be real quick to try to hit the high points. I'm Phil Smart. This is my brother-in-law Gilbert Davis. We're both owners of this property. I've got some cousins back there and I've got my daughter and my son-in-law there. They live on Central Park across from me. The Tillmans have been really good neighbors. I live right, right south of the interstate with him. Sonny Tillman I've known a long time. Watched him take up hay with Mary. Uh, about 14 years ago we got an interstate access permit and this was going to happen before the Beckwith Road interchange was going to and we were going to build a western bypass. But the folks in the city government at that time preferred it to be further away from Davidson County because there was a thing called an edge city concept that if you built something closer to Davidson County, then your tax dollars would go to Davidson County. So they applied for that. It was good for 10 years. It expired. They had to reapply for it. They got it in, I think it was 2017. It's good for 10 years. TDOT's already said in the letter that we've got that they've got to do this interchange by 2017 or they lose the approval from the Federal Highway Administration and they got to go back through the process of approval all over again, which took about five years. <clears throat> and don't kill me for saying this, I know you'd like to, but I was on the Planning Commission at the time Providence came in. So a lot of those mistakes that were made, I was with a group of people that made those mistakes. But please bear in mind that that's the first large shopping mall area Mount Juliet had ever built. There's quite a few things we do differently. I'm one of the owners, I know what the problems are. If we'd had somebody stick $11 million in our face, we would have had Mount Juliet, done, Mount Juliet Road done a lot quicker than it got done because we couldn't buy the right of way. We had to wait on the state to provide the funds. The state's already provided the funds. The Tennessee Improve Act put this as number seven in their nine projects. And I was surprised, it's the $70 million is mainly going to finish Central Pike all the way down to Wicker Boulevard with a sidewalk. 
and, and walking amenities. So that money raised by uh, that project, they divided all this up, and I've seen it for the last five or six years, into three sections is what I understand. One of them was the interchange. The second one was Central Pike into Davidson County at Old Wicker Boulevard and possibly on the Lebanon Road. And I was really surprised at this one until I found out why. The third project in that priority was White and South Nigeria Road. I thought it'd be number one. But you know why it's third? If they widened it today, you'd be chasing your traffic jam three quarters of a mile further south at Central Pike and South Nigeria Road when they had place to go. You still got the same narrow Central Pike, nothing's been done to it. I was told at one time that South Nigeria Road across Percy Creek Lake will stay a two lane road until they make that bridge a four lane road because they don't design two lane roads to go into, or four lane roads to go into the narrow bridges. That would have to be done before they would do it. I don't like to hear that because South Nigeria will help me too. Uh, so, you know, I got a lot of energy behind this. We've been working on it for 10 or 12 years. We got the best plan we thought we could come up with. You know, I was thinking today, if, we, if we'd have had the South Mountain Road right away and had the money, we could have had that in place. And we're trying to put Providence Parkway in completion stage before we put in traffic. And it goes right through my house. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I feel, while you're up there, can you explain what happened between 2013 and now? You had a developer at the time, and then that kind of fizzled out, and then the, the development stopped. Frank Horton and Dudley Smith were the first persons we hired to develop this plan. The backbone of that is basically what they designed. We just up updated it. So they thought they had a multifamily user coming in with Crescent Builders coming out of Brentwood. They were from North Carolina. Crescent changed their direction and went away from apartments and went into doing single family development. So we got this approved. We didn't have the interchange in the horizon because they didn't have a federal highway permit yet so we had to wait till we got that in place and then we came along with multifamily so the the first eight million dollars we're putting into this road and the infrastructure is coming from our proceeds of sale on the apartment site we're doing that because that makes our further development much better I mean be a fool to do it. But then to help the state speed up the interchange they're getting seven acres of prime commercial property in right away at the interchange and in front of my house and in front of Gilbert's house and my daughter's house. And we've told Ed a long time back, Mayor Haggerty, that we would put that on the table as long as it wasn't overreaching. If the state goes out there and wants to take 25 acres for an interchange, I think I'm going to disagree with that. The last thing I'll say, and I, I get nervous when I talk about it, but the diverging diamond interchange that they plan to put in here, that's their preferred because it takes up it takes up less land and it puts more traffic in a small space. If you've been to Pigeon Forge lately, that's a diverging diamond interchange. And it really works. You kind of got to drive it once or twice before you figure out that it works because sometimes you stop at the wrong place. But it moves a lot of traffic in a short period of time and gets them off the interstate and not running 80 miles an hour and stacking into each other because they've got long on ramps next on the, on the edge of the interstate. So um, I think they put a good bit of thought in it for the last 25 years we've been hoping we'd get it. <laughs> and I think it's time. One thing we like to say to regulator folks is these apartments will be rented to people that choose to live in apartments, not have to live in apartments. And there's a big difference in the clientele that you get when somebody chooses to live instead of monetarily they can't afford it. And that's what's happened around in some of the areas between here and Percy Priest Lake. So it's a big change. I've seen Percy Priest Lake come in. I've seen Interstate 40 come in. All those improvements have come in during my lifetime of living here. And I can't tell you right now that any of them were bad for us when we got it. So thank you. Thank you. Did you want to? Yeah. Okay, I'll move then. Oh, I, I can probably, probably hear. Um, my, my question is actually the fun part. So mine are not a problem. This is a good opportunity and fun. 
I would like to discuss and find out, this is prime real estate, I think we're sitting on a gold mine. I remember running down the roads when we just had a two lane, you remember that, Mount Juliet, we just had two lane road. None of this was out here, so this is a huge improvement for our city. But my question is, what I see right there sitting on that gold mine, which I think we would all agree it is, what can we do to bring in the highest clientele possible, which is going to generate the most revenue for our city? And I guess when I'm looking at it, I would think, what can I do to bring in there? Who is going to want to rent that? And when I was out in Franklin a couple of weeks ago, where you were, Mr. Smart, also, we saw that McEwen plan as well. And it was a, a beautiful concept. Um, personally, I feel it would be a great addition to Mount Juliet. When you look at that and you see the rental, I think uh, Mike brought up about the rental, the high-end rental and so forth. When we get that, that's generally going to bring your Class A office workers to come in from that. And I'm referring to like Mitsubishi. And they come in, and te technically from what I understand, they kind of explain what they want. So they'll say, hey, we're bringing in our high wage earners. We would like to have an area where we can work we can walk where we want to eat, where we live and so forth. And generally, when I look at that plan, I'll see like the parking and all of the parking is on the inside of where they live, like a high rise. So it's really uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, when you generate that. And then I guess from, when I look at that particular concept, I'm wondering, are we looking at something, and I think I just took this from your website, are we looking at something more, uh, a type of, apartment complex garden variety where it's three or four stories high and they walk up is that is that fair i can show you some elevations if you'd like to kind of test drive what we're what we're looking at no it's it's, it's not it's not a garden style okay no it's it's, a, it's an urban style uh, okay thing but maybe do it now or if you want to finish and i can oh no this is i'm just asking a question um and if i if i can just mentioned it at first reading uh, Terry had sent an email to all of us and so I read some of it in the first reading meeting to point out some things and what she was talking about is the McEwing, McEwen um, that's off one of the exits in Franklin and um, yeah that's right it's right there which is developed so um, this this is not a McEwen plan so she's she's asking, um, I guess. How can we get this? <laughs> so, but that's well, what she's or, talking or can about. Can we get this? <laughs> well, uh, I, I guess I would say a couple of things. One, this is a, a work in progress, and it's going to take 20 years to build out. Just like, just like Cool Springs, as as, as you know, the mall went in there and the. Um, mid to late 90s and, and so it's a it's a work in progress this whole thing and and so um, we have we uh, we took a lot of the city uh, Kenny went with us and we took a lot of the the uh, commissioners and so forth down and, and we did a, a tour of the Cool Springs area and um, we're not really trying to mimic anything so much as highlight specific things and, and patterns as you say uh, Somebody mentioned a, a sense of place. That's that's exactly what we're endeavoring to, to create here. And you do that through uh, the detailed plans of, of having uh, buildings pushed up to the street, having sidewalks and traffic calming devices and all those things. What, what I've presented here today, what we're looking at is a 20,000 square foot overview. It's a flyby of, of the master plan. I, I, I will assure you that the details that, that we will put into each and individual block of this, we've cut it up into blocks, obviously, um, we'll, we'll have those details. And as far as, you know, the apartments, now I have zeroed in on that, and I can, I can show you some, some details there, but uh, they're all interior corridor buildings. They're uh, three and four story buildings. Uh, they're, they're large buildings. They're, hundred the, the main building is 130 feet wide by almost 300 feet long so these these are you know roughly twice the size of some of those uh, garden buildings and uh, they have in, invoked a uh, 
a, a commercial type facade to that. And so yeah, it's it's quite a quite a bit different. And then in the front here, you might I know it's hard on on this scale, but we have public parking in in the front, and then we have two access control points here, and all this area is um, is resident parking. So. Um, I assure you that they're not they're not garden buildings. I have one quick question. Yes, ma'am. Do you envision that particular plan bringing in like your corporate headquarters, um, your Class A office workers? Do you envision that being attractive, something they would want? Most definitely. Okay. How about two other points? The economic level we'll be leasing apartments to generally you can't say ever, but they don't have any children. So we should have a minimal impact on public school. The second point I want to make, unlike other persons that have come for me at the Planning Commission and other places, Mike signed contracts on both of these tracks. He's going to be the one that's going to be developing it. And he's got skin in the game right now. He just doesn't have as much as I want yet. <laughs> but he's not making a bunch of empty promises to you. He's, he's the one that's going to bring it to fruition and do it. So. It helps him, he puts a good economic level in the apartments because he's going to be selling on 30 acres right across the street from him. So, thank you, Chief. Okay, here we go. I have, I have a couple of questions just concerning the development. Yes. Um, it was brought out in the commissioner's meeting that uh, you didn't want to do condos because it took too long to lease, uh, things like that. But during the conversation, you said it, it was said online a little bit that you're funding the roadways with the sale of the land. So why would condos not work in a time frame of the extensions and of the, the, the actual exit interchange? Why would it not work in, in that situation where you have more of an ownership position, kind of more of like a downtown style, um, a little more upscale office, uh, of people that work in class A office spaces? That, that, that's the first one. Second question is, what is the occupancy rate going to be by the before the interchange is built? We're, we're, we're talking about apartments. That's all we're talking about now. And what is the total occupancy going to be? Um, there's five hotels, it looks like, or six hotels on there um, on the new drawings that are being asked to be put into the, to the system. Um, you were talking earlier about 300 and something cars or whatever, or 2,000 trips a day um, as, as going through there. Um, what is the total occupancy before that gets built? Um, third question, TDOT has a funny way of when the pandemic hits and funding runs out of dropping projects and moving projects around. I reached out to somebody I know and with all the stuff going on, um, there are funding issues. So um, I want to know what you're going to do if they don't fund the overchange right away and we have to go back to another 10 year drawing plan. Uh, fourth. Um, in the plan, it looks like the uh, Central Pike is not being widened all the way to uh, South Mount Juliet Road. Is that correct? Or, uh, not you can answer initial. all of these in the same. It, it looks like it stops uh, where where y'all are and where it comes in. It looks like it goes back down to two lanes as it goes back to. If, you, if I could, let me just interject on that one. Go right I'm, not, I'm not going to remember all four questions. I got I'll you. you I, and I'll help you. But, Sorry. But, but I'll tell you that. Um, what we're doing is, is we're tying into Central Pike at the new location so that we're going to have to put something into the current Central Pike and then rip it out in, in a couple of years. I got that. So that's kind of the answer to that. Um, no, my Central, point is Central Pike South, not where you tie in from South, uh, uh, where you where the uh, interchange is going to be. Does it stop there from TDOT or does it continue all the way to Mount Juliet? So correct me if I'm wrong, but basically the way I Shows understand it, it is that the interchange is, is one project. And then, and then extending um, Central Pike down to South Mount Juliet is another project. Correct. And then South Mount Juliet Road okay. is, is a project. Gotcha. Uh, and then this, and then taking Central gotcha. all the way to Hermitage is, is a fourth project. So they, they break it up into four, four pieces, four pieces. Gotcha. It just didn't show it going all the way to right. South yeah. so Mount Juliet Road on your drawing. So there's right. another plan that shows Central Pike spurring off. So, 
the, the quality of development of, of this is, is, is going to be high. I know I can say that without, you know, kind of stepping you through that. It's like, okay, those are words, but, um, you know, the, the amenity package is, is extensive and our, um, our landscaping and, and everything that goes into um, producing the look and the feel of, of this is going to be high. Um, uh, our clubhouse alone is like 9,000 feet, which is, which is a large space dedicated to just getting community together and interacting. The project is, is uh, roughly a $60 million project. And so it's a large scale top top of the line project. Now, the the reason why condos are are not on the table, I guess, for, for one, it's, it's just not my business. It's, it's, it's similar, and I can see how one would think, well, just sell them rather than lease them, but it, it's not that, it's really not that simple. The condominium projects, now, when you go to the Gulch in downtown Nashville, you, you can do a two, three hundred maybe unit uh, condo project and, and have that gestation period where you're leasing those out. But, but what happens is, is that the mortgage market is, is geared toward um, FHA and it's a government program and you have a lot of requirements. One of the, one of the ones that, that's, that's kind of hard is to buy this much land, spend as much on the infrastructure, and then, you know, typically what you have to do is phase that in so that you, you have to sell 50% of the units pre-sell before you can have the first closing. So logistically, it's a it's a nightmare, quite frankly. So that would give time for the interchange to get in. <laughs> well, I mean, again, you know, this doesn't have to happen. No, I mean, no. it, it, it doesn't. But, but I'll tell you, the, the it would be a real shame if it didn't. I'm, I'm telling you because this much infrastructure and then this much right away. I mean, 11 million dollars worth of gift to the city is is significant, and that's what we think. You know, it kind of tips tips the scale and as far as the as far as the quality of the development. It, it's high. I mean, the the yeah. city the city will attest to that. I mean, I can I can take you through some of that. I don't think we have time tonight, but. I can, I can, I think I can get everybody comfortable with, with the, the quality and the, the level of amenities and, and all that. Um, and, and the traffic, again, you know, nobody is discounting the fact that, that South Mount Julia Road and in, and in general, there's traffic in Middle Tennessee. It's just part of the, I think Kenny mentioned, it's part of the two-edged sword of having, having growth. But, but the good side of it is you do have money. You, you have one of the best school systems in the, in the state. And and so that's going to bode well going going forward. So I sat at the I've been trying to take that Providence Parkway home when I come home in the afternoons and drive it on the weekends. I was the 11th car in line the other day on a Friday about two o'clock, and it took me three lights to just get to Mount Julia Road. So how is that going to improve when you're adding that many more cars back to Providence Parkway? I'm sorry, until they do Central Pike, a lot of people aren't going to go out to Central Pike because it's a danger, it's, it's not a good road. And, and most people avoid it as is if they can now. So I, if you're going to quadruple the wait time to get through that Providence Parkway, right there where it comes out by regions and Kroger's and all that. So what are you doing to improve that part of it? I understand you're creating the roads, so you're creating more traffic but none of the other stuff is being done to help alleviate the traffic to that road. The lights, and then I know we're supposed to have smart lights and all that, that's been promised for five years, and it's done absolutely nothing. Um, I, I, they said we were even gonna have to upgrade those as a part of this um, to, to do that, and I don't know how much he said it was at the time, Mr. Barlow, but it's, uh, it, it just seems like, um, I understand the road improvements. I think it's great. I'm not against development. I think what you've got on there is really good. I think there's some other things that could be, but um, that, that, that's a real concern. When, I, when there's nothing over there now and I have to wait three times and I'm the 11th car, um, that, that's troubling to me in, in itself. So. We're going to give you a better route throughout the lane. So some of that traffic can be divided between problems and Oh, also, 
Amy had, I had asked this in first reading about uh, what's going to be done on South Mount Juliet Road to help alleviate that traffic and make it better. Um, and then he indicated, so Neil, is, are you still here? Yeah. There you are. Um, can you address, I don't know if you were there at the meeting, but Andy pointed out signal wallet. One thing to answer my question was signal modifications along South Mountain through Providence, the through the Providence area, those signals. He mentioned, um, the main thing you mentioned was signal modifications. So can you address that? I, I probably can address that. Uh, I will tell you, and I, and I apologize, but, uh, and Andy couldn't be here. He had prior engagements and uh, I'm not the traffic guy. <laughs> but, uh, so I can't talk about that. I will say that one of the improvements that this will do is put a double left out on Adams Lane. And of course, it'll at some point, it'll connect Adams Lane into Providence Parkway. At some point. Uh, uh, phase, phase two. two. Phase two. Phase two. Phase two. That next thing to have that for the apartment is about. Right. Phase two B. Apartments is pretty much phase two. Yeah. Two A. Yeah. Right. Well, really. Um, yeah, it's kind what of, I was calling. Basically. Kind of. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what are we going to do if they don't get the funding lights. for the, the uh, if they stop the funding for the uh, interchange? So we're just going to live as is. Yep. Uh, I have no, we have no control over TDOT's funding. Exactly. Yeah. The, the bridge wide project is funded. Oh yeah, it yeah. can be changed. I called to ask if they run out of money. All it takes is a vote from the representatives to change it, and you can go right back into the to the thing, uh, into the same waiting pattern that we've been in forever. The plans and, and, and the right of way and everything's been due to lack of money. Been uh, the plans and the right of way and everything's been acquired. For sure, that. it's it's yeah. supposed to start construction in October. Uh, letting in August. No, I'm talking about the new interchange. No, not yes. I'm talking about the like, bridge widening. I tell you that the ADOT was out in my front yeah. lot last week digging for artifacts. Thank goodness they didn't find any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one quick question. It's a little after eight. I'm willing to stay myself. I do have about four questions that I would like to ask, but I don't want to ask mine until you get all yours answered. Would you be willing to continue to stay? I don't know your schedules. If you're good, I'm good. Or what about y'all? Are, are y'all good? Kenny? Okay. Um, well, this, it was I have one last question. What are you going to do if it doesn't get approved? Wait. Wait. I'm seven years old, so I don't know. Yeah, you got to wait that much. Let me answer that. Yeah, that's it. No, that's a that's great a good question. question. That, that is a great question because we lived through that before. I think what would happen, say hypothetically that happens, and worst case scenario is they spend, did you say 11 million? Or is it seven to eleven million or whatever that number is to upgrade roads for the city? If they do that and all they ever get out of this is the three hundred apartments and the interchange never happens, all you have is two thousand more trips a day. And I can tell you, there's fast food restaurants currently on their way to this city. That regardless of what happens, because that's sort of the new future, the, the days of the big family style sit down restaurants. We're probably going to see a lot of those in the future. So, but you're going to see, and I get those requests every day. So we're recruiting hard. For example, the Christmas store alone in downtown Mount Juliet is supposed to be generating about a million visitors a year. And those folks are spending a lot of money on that building. That building's about 15,000 square feet to bring people to downtown Mount Juliet. And you're right, it could be possible that worst case scenario is that these gentlemen and this developer spends the money, $11 million to do the upgrades, buys the property, and all they end up with is 300 and some odd units of not garden style apartments, but uh, the higher end apartments. And you're right, and if that happens, uh, do I foresee that happening at state level for as much money and all the federal and state work that's happened? No, I don't. But you're right, with the economy, you never know what the future holds. None of us would have been sitting here a year ago and thought in one year in Mount Jeff, Tennessee, that you'd have a tragedy and a parade, that you'd have a tornado, EF4, I believe it was, that you'd have COVID-19, a pandemic. You're right, anything. I would never, ever say that anything's not possible. But I think at this particular point, it's highly unlikely. If the state was to last minute, and I'm going way outside on them here, pull the funding for the I-40 interchange bridge widening, I would think the city probably at this point, if that was to happen, and I don't want to speak for them, but I would speculate that they would pay out of our 
resources that we've got in our reserve set aside for the engineering work, design, and all the other stuff. We're not going to let the bridge widening not happen. I think that'll make a huge difference. Now, I'm basing, and I'm not disputing this gentleman because I know him well and he's a good man. Um, Mr. Barwell's not here, but we had lengthy, lengthy conversations about how what the difference would be. And I'm probably not stating the right number, but I think that the improvement from the signalization, back in my days with the police department, I can tell you that I used to go out manually and set the lights, but none of them communicated together because they didn't. They just didn't communicate. They were all individual. Now they're sort of on a daisy chain, if you can picture that, and they communicate with one another. Is it a massive improvement? Maybe not to one you can notice, but when you do the traffic counts, you can tell. Is there a room for improvement? Absolutely. Absolutely. For example, the million dollars that the city spent with the state of Tennessee to put the LED lighting, I can't tell you how that would have reduced crime or made people feel more comfortable about the city, but I can tell you that was a good investment on the city's behalf. I just really feel like at this particular point, as a resident as well, as somebody that served the city for 30 plus years, that if nothing ever happened beyond this, this set of apartments doesn't trouble me in, in the least. As a matter of fact, it'll generate less traffic than some of the businesses that we have on the way to our city. Yes, ma'am. On this particular plan, how many students do you foresee that coming into the Wilson County school system? Oh, if you're basing just yeah. on the apartments? Yeah. Oh gosh, that's a great question. Probably about 50. How many? Five zero. 50. Five, he, said, he said 50. And I don't know, and I always hate to speculate on it, but if you base it on other apartment complexes that have been here or that have come, for example, at Lifestyle Center, it hasn't generated a huge impact on the school system. Of course, Dale Webb, thank you very much, has zero. Well, I mean, that was a big question. When I looked at the heat maps out there where I am, out there, yeah. um, you know, we built that $100 million high school for 2,000 students, and I guess what I'm saying is, are we going to, are we going to kind of, the more students we get, the more, a lot of times we end up building these large schools that cost a lot of money. So they I'm do. trying to get a, an idea here. What are we looking at as far as future 50 students coming in? So that's obviously not too much. Yeah, it's, I mean, exactly. Probably no more than your typical subjects, and in some ways less than that. For example, when Dale Webb came in, one of the selling points was is that it wouldn't have an impact on the school system. But we'll say this for somebody again that came here a long time, and for those of you who've been here, our school systems are, I think, currently ranked second in the state of Tennessee and get awards from all over the country and beyond. That's a bragging point, I think. And that's one of those drawer drawers that brings people to our community. Yeah. So even if the development happens or not, you're going to still have probably mass growth, not only just in the city limits of Mount Juliet, but also outside of that and in the region. For example, if you look all around us in Middle Tennessee, there's growth all around. So even again, as we spoke to earlier, if you stopped all the growth in the city, would that make a small impact? Absolutely, but it's gonna be overwhelmed from the others. So one thing good about development is, it does encourage the state to work with the city, to support the city. And of course, the city presses hard through our leadership and our elected body to hold these folks, it's gonna sound odd, accountable to make sure that they're putting up their fair share to some degree from what it used to be in the past. It's just leaps and bounds beyond that. Plus, I'd like to make one one point, and and Kenny, maybe you can stay up here and, yeah. and, and, and talk through this with me. But it's a it's a fact that not just in Mount Julia, but any municipality, commercial development pays the the lion's share and pays the pays the lion's share of the tax revenues. And so by by that, this is going to solve a lot more issues than it than it creates as, as far as the, either however you want to look at traffic schools or whatever the other similar size developments that I've done it, it you know it might sound surprising but it's only 45 to 50 you know and we're talking K through 12 uh, so it's minimal impact on on schools in fact it'll generate you know the property taxes on this property will be three hundred fifty four hundred thousand dollars half of that money goes directly to the schools as you know also ask what facilities tax on Right. I have a question. Did you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is more just a general development of Mount Juliet. And again, having lived in Williamson County, okay, it has a lot of amenities for the community, but it seems like here the goal for Mount Juliet is just to develop without regard to green space family amenities, be it rec centers, you have to go to either Lebanon or to Donaldson to the Y, but there is nothing here in Mount Julian. And I, you know, when you ask about it, they say, well, 
you have to increase the taxes and people don't want that. But what about when somebody wants to develop, that part of when they develop is they have to give back to the community. So yep. they get something out of it, but so does Mount Julia. Gotcha. That's, of an amenity. that's an excellent point. Uh, I'm going to give you an example without setting anybody in the room. We have a hotel developer in our midst today that brought the Hampton Inn, brought the Courtyard Camara, and bringing the dual brand. And each one of those hotels is between 30 and 40 million dollars each. Of course, they generate jobs and other things and retail and things of that nature. But the business travelers that travel all across this country and beyond and come through our community are more apt to stop there, spend their money, get on the interstate, and go back uh, to their business destination or back to their home. Because the map just low tax rate, of course, there hadn't been a lot of money to go towards those infrastructure projects like Monday Park and Charlie Downs Park. So we've got a lot of what we call little passive parks that we've built in recent years. So you're exactly right. Just today, the largest portion, if not, I think minus one member of our elected body was touring a piece of property in this vicinity that I personally would love to see happen. I think it's a great opportunity and it's a beautiful piece of property that would really be a great addition. The reason we're able to do that is because we've got right now to the tune of about, two, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it's a whole lot better than nothing that would not have been generated without the hotels. And we have basically a hotel motel tax that for every time somebody stays in a room, a certain percentage goes to our parks fund so we can buy that property. Had that not happened, had the hotels not came, we would not be in a position today to maybe be on the cusp of buying a piece of property with a lake that's stocked with an event center of about, I think, 10,000 square feet. Now, whether or not the elected body chooses to direct the city to purchase that piece of property, I'm hopeful they do. Uh, that's a great question. The only way we ever get there is through the development helping pay for that. That 30 to 40 million dollars that we have set aside right now did not come from property taxes. It came from growth monies and retail sales tax monies that your city leadership and your elected body chose to be very good stewards to set that money aside. Had it not been for that, we wouldn't even be talking about the possibility of these road projects. Do I agree that we need to add more when it comes to parks and those other amenities? Absolutely. Can I tell you our elected body, staff, and our parks board is talking about that as we speak? Absolutely. And for a guy that's been here 30 plus years at the City Hall, I can tell you that I'm excited about what I'm seeing right now and the potential for some of the things that we're going to get. And if there's ever time to do it, it's now. And we all need the quality of life. So we have this saying about you to make today better than yesterday and, to, and tomorrow better than today. We see a lot of what's going on. Trust me, we strive because we see in the grocery stores, our kids go to the same schools and the same daycares. We eat at the same places. We've got the same worries. And we want what's best for you. And if we let you down, agree. Just like Mr. Smart said, is there mistakes that's been made? Absolutely. But as Daryl Walter, like said, that's experience. Sometimes good or bad, it's experience. And uh, I wouldn't be standing here before you today, whether or not he develops or somebody else does, or whether or not he does or doesn't, or whether or not this gets approved by our elected body or not, I can tell you for sure, it's not a political thing, we're working hard at the city to make sure your quality of life is up here. And I agree, unfortunately, traffic is always going to be an issue, sadly. We live so close to Nashville, and I, again, will tell you that in a lot of ways, a lot of that's going to get worse simply because it is a great place and other people want to be here. So we got to work together, even sometimes agreeing to disagree or compromise it to get us there. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, Mark is our Chamber of Commerce Director. I'd just like to make a couple of comments real quick. Thank you, Commissioner Malayli, for doing this tonight. Thanks to all you for coming out. I've lived in Mount Juliet for over 32 years. I make my living. I am the traffic in Mount Juliet um, every day, usually all over Mount Juliet. So I. I, uh, I get to, to see it and live it every single day. Someone mentioned uh, space. What are we creating? Quality of life, I would suggest to you that the people in this room, um, along with you all have created an environment that people want to move to. Um, we have awesome schools, award-winning schools. We have probably one of the finest police departments. We're a safe city. Um, but we still have a problem with between 47 and 40, 47 and 50 percent of the citizens of Mount Juliet, our workforce leaves our town every day to go to work. And it's been a real eye opener in the last 90 days as people have maybe been forced, in, in, in no other words, to, to work from home. Imagine half of our population being able to someday work in the same town that they live. They're not getting on the interstate. They may not be getting on the roads at seven in the morning. They might be able to get on the roads at 20 to eight and not drive as far. When you can have your workforce live in the same town where their jobs are, 
and these are good jobs. These are jobs that people will be able to afford the kind of houses and the, 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 the home sale rates that we're selling in Mount Julie, which we're all benefiting from. Those people will be able to, you know, that, that gives more family time. It, it lets people volunteer for school, coach Little League, support the churches. But more importantly, I've got about 700 customers that their livelihood depends on traffic business people or people like you supporting their business. And so I speak for them tonight, hoping and thanking Mr. Murphy. I've, I've known him for quite a while. Mr. Smart, the artifacts they were looking for was probably my lunchbox from school. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> like you, I probably didn't find anything out there. But uh, I've watched everything from Providence develop, Dell Webb. Um, there, was, there were people that wanted nothing to do with Providence. They didn't want Dell Webb. Communities around us have had the opportunity to have a Dell Webb and they've run them out of town. I don't think they know what they have. So uh, there are a lot of pluses to this. Um, like you, I watched a million square feet in 2005 start getting leveled all at the same time. That sign had been out there for 20 years probably. And only when J.C. Penney's started putting up preformed concrete walls after they had leveled 106 acres or what over here in Providence did people start calling my office and say, what are they building out here? Well, it happened at that time to be the largest open air shopping center in maybe in the state of Tennessee, all under construction at the same time. Mount Juliet was overwhelmed. Um, it taxed every city service, every department. We learned a lot from that. And people to this day say, why didn't they put it in? We were, we were building our roads one project at a time. You want to put another one in? Okay, you got to widen the road in front of your place and then put a stoplight in. I'm sure if somebody could go back and paint that picture again, it would look very different. What I see here is people who have learned that lesson and putting this infrastructure in place, anticipating that growth. Nobody expected Providence to take off. It was an award-winning community for probably seven or eight years in a row. This is the kind of place that people want to come and live and work and shop and play and pray. And if we can keep some of those families, the breadwinners or the, the employees, Working in Mount Julia, they become our customers. Just if you just look at the schools, well, we got we got to pay for the schools. Right now, Mount, our Wilson County Schools has the fifth lowest per pupil expenditures in the state of Tennessee of all the school systems. Yet we're turning out award-winning top two product. It's a phenomenal job. You may or may not know that every student, when you divide the the budget by the students. It's about $8,600 per student. The average homeowner say you pay $2,000. Well, where does the other $6,600 come from? It comes from the commercial development, which pays a property tax over 50% higher on commercial than they do on residential. So there are a lot of benefits. This is a tremendous boost for public education. Hotels don't put kids in the schools. They help fund it. Kenny made some good points on how they're now funding our parks and recreation. Nobody can build anything in Mount Julie without greenways, bicycle racks, decorative trash cans, sidewalks, extensive landscape packages, brick on four sides, incredible. Um, they're building design standards. Uh, they're almost over the top in some cases, but that contributes to the quality of life and the appreciating home values and business we have. Like Kenny, I could probably talk longer than Kenny, but uh, I thank all of you for coming out. Thanks for what you do to make Mount Juliet good. Please, let me leave you with this. The last 90 days have been brutal, brutal on our businesses. If you have an opportunity to shop local and spend your tax dollars here, please do. If you're used to buying something somewhere else and wonder if you can get it in Mount Juliet, call the Chamber of Commerce. We'll direct you to somebody that has a product line that may be able to satisfy what you're looking for. Those are the same people that let you sell Girl Scout cookies outside, have the car wash on their parking lot. They need some help right now. So please make a conscious effort as we go into back to school, the sales tax holiday, holiday shopping, whatever you gotta do, please give your local uh, businesses uh, an opportunity to earn your business. That's all I've got, thank you. in March and y'all did a fabulous job uh, getting there so quickly and I just want to commend you for that but um, I've lived here for 37 years absolutely love Mount Juliet 
drug him here. And um, But I'm just concerned with all the growth. We lose that small town feel that we've always had. And it concerns me with all the retail space coming in and all the commercial space coming in. When I go to Providence and up North Mount Juliet Road, all the vacancies that are there. And uh, so that concerns me. Why are we bringing in more when we already have a lot of vacancy and a lot of turnover in a lot of the places that are already here? Um, and again, you know, like they said with the housing situation, you know, we have two school age kids and, you know, they've been talking recently about letting people go in the school system. Um, so, you know, like is like, you know, some other said, is there a plan for another school um, with all this extra additional housing coming in? I assume that's probably for me, but yes, ma'am. We work with the school system very closely. Of course, everybody knows about the new Green Hill High School going in. There's also a plan for some new uh, schools over by the Mount Juliet High School that's going to be going in. As far as when you come to the vacant space, you're going to have that in any community where there's attrition, where a business goes out. For example, Logan's, you know, they closed most all their stores, and then they did some renegotiations, some leases, so they're able to keep the Lebanon one and the, uh, the one, I think, on Music Valley Drive, I believe it is. But we're already working with people, even in this environment, even with COVID-19, to have replacement businesses for there. For example, you know, everybody got concerned when the White Castle closed, which I helped recruit here years ago. It took 10 years to get White Castle here, and it was here about three or four years. But what went back in there is actually, in my personal opinion, a better fit than what was there before. We already have a replacement for tenant for Crystals. Is it tougher right now? Absolutely. Uh, the little retail center that went in up here by Exxon, and by the way, Exxon will be changing to 7-Eleven because they're coming back into the middle of Tennessee market. Uh, that little strip center we taught the owner, which is Dr. Truitt, into upgrading that little building. I think you'll agree the old vitamin shop. And now we've got, uh, may not wow anybody, but it's, it's life. It gives it blood back. It gives it retail. There's a little uh, Subway sandwich shop, and then we're working with another little restaurant to go beside it. So I understand when you see that, you go, why would you build more of it? Just say again, if those folks put the $11 million in the infrastructure selfishly, my personal part of it is I'd love to have that part of it because we can make it happen quicker because those roads can be done at the city level, which happen a whole lot quicker because there's not the same type of hoops that you've got to jump through. Um, the apartments, uh, it gives people a place to live, of course, and reside, and hopefully a lot of those people will work here. Hopefully a lot of those people patronize our businesses. So worst case scenario, uh, Mr. Murphy, if you were to build this and all we got was the apartments, that would be a blessing because we got the $11 million in roads. And then those folks then could go patronize those businesses here that need that foot traffic. So I can promise you from a city standpoint, the last thing the city wants is any empty space. So we're working tirelessly ourselves. And then on top of that, you've got brokers and real estate agents and other people that are constantly trying to do that. And some are exciting, some are, there's some exciting new businesses that one little fast food restaurant, again, will generate more traffic than this one set of apartments. Can you address how much more property tax money comes in from apartments versus single-family homes? Yes, yes. Uh, Commissioner asked me the question about, you know, one, of the, one of the misnomers is that apartment folks don't pay their fair share of property taxes because they don't pay directly to the, you know, to their tax, their property tax. What they do is they pay that through when they pay their monthly rent. Uh, commercial buildings pay 40% more and uh, apartment complexes are sort of rated along with commercial, so they pay a 40% property tax where we pay 16 and a half, which is about 25 percent does that make sense so that question i get it you say well they're not paying their fair share they don't have ownership here and it's also important to note too that a lot of the homes that you see in mount Joe, tennessee from every demographic you can think of there's a lot of rental property that's also in the residential neighborhoods as well uh, so because those are rated at residential they pay residential rate where in reality they're renting you know some of you have some rental situations so i hope that answers though but it, if you live in an apartment complex, you're going to be paying at a higher rate, even though you don't pay that bill directly because you pay it through uh, the uh, apartment complex. Okay, I have a question. Two things Mr. Murphy said, stated earlier. Um, this being a high speed, you, 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 anybody can answer this, but uh, yeah. this being a high speed uh, interchange is what he, I believe the word he used. Um, having that in place and having that being an issue as itself, we talked about the the uh, four lane coming down in two and how long that process is going to take and the interchange itself will be there before they actually widen Central Pike at all. Um, so that's always going to be a concern. 
The other thing is that he stated that as these as these as this land gets developed, that it's they're not only going to be pulling from the apartments or from the local area, they're going to be pulling from a wider spectrum when that interchange is in place. So not only are we, are we developing more uh, traffic with the current development, but you're pulling it out of the city and around in the surrounding areas to a small town infrastructure that's not set up for it. So again, trap more, more even com compiled traffic concerns. Yeah, I mean, what, you, what he said is exactly spot on. The difference is though, again, as I mentioned earlier on, if today the city just say that it stopped, okay, then all the retail pulled out because you didn't have any future growth, any promise, any hope, and it went somewhere else, you'd still have the same amount of traffic coming because the growth would still be around you. So even if we issued, again, the dirty word moratorium and you stopped it all, the growth around us, it would just go somewhere else and they're still going to get through here because 40 courses is what the widely, most widely used interstate in the country and people got to get to it. The folks from Laverne, Smyrna, and in your county is continuing to grow and I'm not saying they're not helping, of course they help through schools and other things, but they don't necessarily help with the infrastructure in the city. So uh, all I can tell you is I, I hear you, you're exactly right. That's why meetings like this is so important. That's what I love about it. what we're doing tonight is a lot of what you're not seeing across the country right now to where people aren't willing to get together, hear one another, and all I can do is, that, is, that, is that we need to all pretend that we're opaque and that we can see one another and that you can see your heart and say you've got a little, uh, you remember the analog meters from years ago? Do y'all remember those? The old school, for those of you old enough to remember it? So just imagine if one thing says you're telling a lie and one thing says you're telling the truth. We're here to tell you the truth. And unfortunately, sometimes things don't work like that work out like we would hope that they will. But I wouldn't be here tonight, you know, if, if I asked me and I wouldn't say the things I say if I didn't believe that that would happen. Of course, of course anything could happen, and it's happened before. And I hate that when I have to face some of the people that I serve, and that happens. Do I feel like that could happen here? No. Do I feel like traffic will happen regardless? Yes. But we have a great opportunity here to make it better, and we're working tirelessly not only with the developers that come here, not just this gentleman, but other people. And we're definitely working with the state of Tennessee, and I feel probably as confident as I ever have in my entire tenure with the city that you're going to see some great things. The bridge is the first phase of it. Golden Bear was one of the phases. The lights were the phases. The adaptive signals was a phase. Uh, all the right turn lanes and the improvements you see, the roundabout you're going to see, or actually the traffic light, I believe it is, over here by Kroger. Those little small things make huge differences, and the city's full speed ahead. To give, I'll give an example without throwing uh, Mr. Smart under the bus, but he works at which bank? Bank of the South? Southern Bank, I always want to say Bank of the South. Southern Bank, down here on Mountain Jet Road at Northwest Rutland. The city made an error, an error years ago, not intentionally, but what we should have done years ago, that we, we should have projected that we needed light at Northwest Rutland. My, my, my son went to school there his entire career at Mountain Jet Christian Academy. A lot of you go to church there. We should have predicted years ago that when Pinnacle Bank came in and Carrick Glen came in and Rutland Place came in and the bank came in and all these other developments came in, we should have said you had to put some money in the escrow account one day to help offset the cost of this life. But instead what the city did, which I commend them, it was the right thing to do. Now his bank and Mr. Smart might have not have liked it, but we said if you want to put your bank on that corner, you had to help the city and the citizens of Mount Jewett by paying for a light, which is a tune of about $300,000 I believe it was. Now they hope in the future that other businesses come so they can share that cost on one of those other corners. Do I think that's going to happen anytime soon? Sorry, Mr. Smart, probably not. But they paid for it. That's the difference your city leadership and your elected bodies do today that they didn't do years ago. But to give the people a pass that were representing the city in the past, they felt like we did. They were doing the right thing. And I know it's hard to say that growth is a good thing and that growth never necessarily pays for itself, but it sure makes a big difference. And for a little old guy that came here at 135 pounds and was called Barney Fife out here patrolling, I can tell you it's made a tremendous difference. We went from about four police, four police cars or five police cars to probably 80 or so now and one of the finest police departments. I agree. Can we expand parks? We're going to do that. I would like to get Chief Hambrick to come up. Uh, I get a lot of questions about crime rates in our apartment communities. One of the big fears is to Mount Jewett is going to uh, turn into an Antioch, yes. and so I would just like him to address the crime rates in our apartment communities here in the city. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, James Hammer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I want to just thank uh, you for the opportunity to serve you. That's um, what I'm, I'm, I'm proud of. I love Mount Juliet. As we look at uh, growth, as we look at different things, 
Not only do we work here, man, we live here. We're driving the same roads, going to the same places that everyone else goes to. Uh, see the traffic. But when I go and visit other places, I come back and I say, man, we don't have a traffic problem. Because there are many, many places that I go where they really have a, when you go to Atlanta, you go to different places that I go to. I mean, Green Hills, we go to Franklin. The Chiefs of, of Police Association is in Franklin. And it's in the area that you're talking about, where the embassy suites and Guyon and all that development, that's where we go. And so we see traffic. And, and one thing of living in Middle Tennessee is just a part of it, because it's a destination place now. People want to be here. The quality of life is here. But as uh, your police department been asked about this development and the impact that it has on our agencies, and we're going to continue to do a good job. That man, I, I love the men and women that serve, that I serve, and they're doing a great job. Uh, as this, our community grows. Thank God for our, our leadership, our commissioner, our city manager, uh, letting our department grow along with the development that's taking place. I've asked, been asked about the crime, and, and when I was asked about this particular project and how it impacts with, with crime, what we've seen, and people automatically think, well, if you have apartments, you're gonna have more crime, and that's a myth, that's not fact, okay? So, one of the things I, I had tasked with our, our staff, we got together and looked at two years. I said, give me two years of data uh, from some apartments and from some noted neighborhoods. And so I got some of these figures uh, here on Belinda Parkway, uh, for example. We have um, uh, two apartment complexes right here on this city, on this street. So Stoner Creek, again, this is two years worth of data. We've had 40 uh, incidents, 40 calls to Stoner Creek apartments. Forest View apartment, we've had 83 calls there. And then we go on the other side. We have Glass Creek with 77, and then Creekside, which is in with it, we've had 34 calls. Um, to give you a, a contrast of that, when you look at the Hickory Hill subdivision, you have 150, uh, Willoughby Station 136, and Wintry 88. Now, the Hickory Hills and Willoughby and and the wind tree, those numbers don't just talk about crime. They're not the, just the crime numbers because some of those are the times that we're in there for traffic enforcement efforts. So saying that, you look at across the board, it's comparable. What is not any more crime in an apartment complex that we're having in, in any of our neighborhoods. And so, in any city, any community, uh, it's not about if it's going to be more crime because of who's going to move there. It's going to be how responsive and how proactive your police department is going to be in the area that's going to deter. Because you can quantify how much crime you're deterring just by having a presence in the area. And with any development that grows and comes to Mount Juliet, we're committed to providing the same quality. And we're not satisfied where we are, as sometimes we rank between fourth and sixth safest city in the state, but we want to be number one. And we're committed to continue to work and to strive to get that, and to be that. But I'm telling you, um, we, I want to just applaud our vice mayor that's here, our commissioner that's here, city manager for you know, you guys get our, we are we are an uh, agency, and everybody don't like the way we do it. You know, I get chastised, y'all give too much information. Well, they don't have to be chief here, I do. And as long as we say an informed community is a safe community. So we're gonna keep providing that. But just look at where we are now and what you've been seeing recently with our Garden Shield program, with our, our LAPRs, our license plate readers, and all of those things that they we've already, uh, man, uh, that, that program alone, man, just just now, every day, 
And so what we're hoping by these cameras being up is that we're hoping to, to funnel where people, I don't know if we'll stop them from committing crime, but we're going to sure enough stop them from committing crime here in the store. And so what we'll, we believe will happen is that because when the word get out, they'll just go around Mount Julie like they've done other places. And so uh, our men and women, though, are doing a great job out here being proactive and uh, being professional. And uh, praise God for the community we live in. And I love serving you. I'm telling you that now. So uh, just giving you that information that we're not seeing any more crime uh, in the apartment communities that we are in our, our other residential communities. And we know that traffic is, is out here. But sometimes traffic, believe it or not, helps us. Because when people are coming here to commit crime, <laughs> hey, yeah. they bog down when they're trying to leave. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chief. We have a question. Yes, Chief. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for your Before COVID, the brick and mortar retail is becoming more and more a thing of a past. So when you look at Providence Marketplace, and then you look at 100 Oaks, who once upon a time was the heyday, and now you're down to a few retail and mostly medical, you kind of have to wonder what's going to happen to Providence Marketplace. I mean, Pure One is history. J.C. Penny is in bankruptcy. So what kind of vision or what kind of efforts? Because, yeah, you can try to encourage people to come, but then if you live anywhere near that, you've got to wonder, okay, if it really tanks, who's really going to want to buy the property when you're sitting with this potential vacant property marketplace that once upon a time when it was first built was the cast me out? And it's really not going that way now. Yeah, that's the same for anywhere across the country. Of course, we all remember Rivergate Mall and Hickory Hollow Mall and all that. That's when you had malls before you had these open air centers, as they call them now. And then folks start saying, we want the convenience of shopping in our own community. And that was long before, of course, e-commerce come along. Now that you got e-commerce, everybody thinks it's the catch me as she said, to shop online. And a lot of ways, they can't do anything. And I know this is sitting perfect. I get it. I've heard it. Whatever everybody said, I respect it immensely. And I'm going to take every bit of it to heart. And I'm going to make sure, at least for my part, that we can do everything we can to hear that, tweak it, and work with these folks to do the same thing. This is this is how we get there, folks. This is how it's supposed to work. And I know I haven't satisfied everybody, nor has anybody else, but uh, all I'm going to do is just give you our promise that we're going to do everything we can to protect your city, to grow in the right direction, and to make it better than what you know it was in the past, and even correct some mistakes. You're exactly right, my friend. I know you well, and I respect you immensely. Uh, that there are a lot of things that what y'all said not is correct and we need to tweak those things. And I just hope you uh, trust us that we'll do that. Anyone else? Question? Where's the construction entrance going to be for all this heavy equipment getting in and out? Great, great question. That is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be where we tell them to be and that's where it's going to be. <laughs> second, second part, how many of the 19 yes. points have y'all yes. agreed to that uh, the commission came back to? How many of the 19 points? Have y'all said yes to on on the other part? That's a great question. Two questions, sorry. No, it's a, Mike, you're probably pretty better for that than I am. Joe help me out with I don't think we we objected really. Bike would be centered bike. Somewhere on center bike would be a bike. It's a likely structure. Access point. Yeah. Are you gonna put all the heavy dump trucks and all that stuff coming in on central pipe? More or less every three times. In and out. The goal with this project would be we have enough property where a lot of the smaller development you see trucks hauling in and out constantly. This one we keep everything on site. So we gotta bring the equipment in, do the job, take the equipment out. commercial mixed use, which is all the blue area that I pointed out earlier, uh, it can include apartments, as does this plan, 
And the only reason you can put an apartment complex under CMU is because the 20 acre tract includes a standalone commercial building. Is that correct? We, uh, yes. The commercial component is integral to, um, to our request. And there, uh, there's two ways that you can qualify for that. It's a, a commercial site or a percentage of the, of the area. And we're devoting 3.23 acres along the front here uh, to commercial uses. So it's over 10% of the site area, 20 acres. So okay. that So that leads to my question actually, which is um, since it's all CMU, how can we be sure that none of the rest of the CMU zone will change from this plan to add more apartments with a commercial building as does this one? Yep. So the plan for the apartments is a specific site plan that, that we have elevations and is a, a specific plan. Everything else is a concept plan. So the next thing that, that we would do is, is pick another pod or a block here and say, okay, this is what we would like to do. And whether it's me or another developer, they would come in with a specific plan in front of the city and so that's the thing, the city has control over every step of this process. Okay. Every step of this process. We're not saying, okay, this is exactly what it's gonna be and just we're just gonna pick one of these buildings off next year and do that. That's, that's not the way it works. The way it works is, is that, and this plan will change. I mean, it's a living, breathing document. And so, but the, the good thing about that is for the city, is that then that gives you the opportunity to say, oh, wait a minute, I kind of like it better this way or whatever, just like we're doing now. Okay. So, so does that answer your question? Okay. E each one of these would come in separately and, and okay. be approved. Okay. That's good to know. And if this were to get approved, uh, as I said, I have not made up my mind. They're still trying to sell me. And so um, if this were to get approved, I'm saying I will not, approve any more apartments for this put. So just saying that. Um, so I think this question's already been asked. Uh, tell us what happens if this development, if, if this amendment doesn't pass. I think Phil said you just sit it, sit on it and wait. I think or, wait another year before we bring it back. Yeah. So, but as far as what was already planned in 2013, would there be any plans to build anything as what's already on the plan? Because the Providence Parkway extension is where it is, it kind of controls what we develop in the rest of it. We really want that to okay, place. We don't anticipate building that many hotels, but we've got those sites that are good hotel sites. If somebody comes in and says they're so good at tax contributions to the city, we won't put them exactly where they all are. We'll put that many on there. We have a demand for them. We've got a sign just take them to and say, here's the key. Okay. Add a little yeah. bit to that. Well, one thing that I would say, and, I, and, and if, if it does not, if it's not approved, if it's for Mr. Smart and Mr. Johnson that you're going to decide, but one thing is that um, someone could come in and, and, and put an office building here today or anywhere along through here. And the way the current PUD language reads is that they would just have to extend to the access point. And that really does, quite frankly, nothing to add to the, to the equation in my, in, my, in my opinion. So that's one thing that, that would happen. And, and the other thing that um, would be a question for not me, but this right of way and the right of way for the interchange you know, if if the city were to have to pay for that or TDOT were to have to pay for that, again, that's that's $11 million that somebody's gonna to have to pay for. Today, as a part of our proposal, we're paying that. So I don't, I don't know what that happens in the future, but I, I'd say it would be up to discussion. Okay. Um, I think this was already asked too, what are the realistic chances that the development will stop at the apartments and the city is left with nothing but a, a one road and apartments. But I think Kenny pretty much addressed that. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions? I just have some closing 
Comments. No, I just have one comment. I think it was Mr. Murphy's plan, which was a positive. I think I saw assisted living uh, building on there. I know we didn't get to that, but that seems like a positive for the city. Yeah, that's, that's yes, about assisted living. It's identified. It's a, it is identified on our plan and it's part of a approved use for uh, CMU. So we would encourage that. And, uh, and I think that Again, once this announcement is made, we'll, we'll get a lot of interest in that, as well as the apartments. Okay. Um, well, if there's nothing else, I'll just make some closing comments. Um, again, thank you all so much. It, it just means a lot that you have kept an open mind and you came here tonight. And um, one other thing, I would like, uh, this is the developer of the current hotel. Would you like to say something? Or not? I don't want to put you on the spot. Right yeah, okay. Okay, all right. Um, he's building the current hotel. Um, so anyway, again, just thank you all so much. I appreciate you coming tonight and keeping an open mind. And that's all I wanted to do. That was all I asked of you to begin with, was just come here with an open mind. Um, I created this table, this discussion table for you, because I want to hear your feedback. What, what I, I has, I, when, when you hear stuff on Facebook, on social media, or next door, it's, a lot of it is confusion, it's misinformation, it's biased information, so, you know, uh, so that's hard to gauge, but when you come here tonight and you see the whole picture and then can give me logical knowledge, uh, a true objective feedback. That's what I want on this development from you. So I promised that I would answer this question. I mean, ask this question. So I know some, some have left, but of the people that have come here tonight and you've seen, you've gotten your questions answered, hopefully, and you've seen what you've seen tonight, are you more likely now, after the fact, to support this development moving forward. I still want McEwen. I know. You still want McEwen. <laughs> um, to be continued. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Well, I promised that I would ask that question. And if you want to, please text me, email me, whatever. Uh, I will answer you. And so uh, I have a hard decision to make going forward on July 13th. Um, so pray for me <laughs> on that. Um, I do want your feedback and that I take that great consideration in that. But I, in this seat, I also have to look at the, the vision of the city. I also have to take that into account. Um, because if this city doesn't have a, a vision, um, hopefully with a good plan, then, you know, we're going to have problems. So anyway, yeah, just pray for me, if you will. I've, I've got a hard decision to make. Um, I guess, uh, in, because I'm, I'm here with you. I'm a resident, too. I live here, too. I live down Belinda Parkway. I live on Sunny Acre Drive. I drive in this traffic here every single day. Yes? Could you share with us your contact info? Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a car. Yes. Okay. Um, so I live here with you. I'm right here with you. Um, did, so, I, so I created this for you because I, I care about you and I care about what you think. Um, so in saying that, um, I guess, how many of you like football? I guess we can kind of put it this way. <laughs> okay. What is the goal of the offense? It's to move the ball down the field 10 yards at a time to get to the goal, right? So this is perhaps a, a good way to move the ball down the field. So if you're the quarterback, you have a choice to make. You can sit on the ball or you can move the ball down the field. So you don't have to answer. It was just an idea I thought of to make maybe help relate, you know, what are you going to do with the ball? 
Are we going to move it or are we going to sit on it? So I don't know. Maybe that don't make sense. So that's all. Uh, if there's nothing else, again, if we could request the church's um, wishes to not smoke on the property, either in the grass or the parking lot or anywhere. And um, I guess that's it. And I really appreciate y'all coming out tonight. Okay. And thank, thank you. Thank y'all very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay.